So what was it that you think with Noriega being an artist, yourself being an artist, and then talking to artists, how do you think that that gives a different dynamic to the type of questions and answers that you get? Well, it's gonna, the artists that are gonna sit with us, they're, they're not gonna feel that at a regular like press run or, or, or media interview. It's, it's more like talking shop with friends and then you add the liquor to it and it's just gonna open people up even more. They don't feel like it's like, I got you questions or, or, or we're trying <laughs> right. to create clickbait, even though it seems like that sometimes, but that's never our intention is to create clickbait on anything. Right. It's just really like, yo, let's just talk like if the cameras weren't on and you know, of course, the liquor, someone might walk away from it saying, damn, they got me because I, you know, I drank too much. But, you know, we're all grown-ass men or grown-ass women. Right. Like, that's, it's up to you. And there's a, a lot of people that don't drink on Drink Champs, and they're still giving us these amazing stories. And I feel that their guard is down because they're amongst their peers. Right. And that's one of the things that both you and Nori, I think, do a good job of is, is making the guests comfortable. Because it's funny, like, here on Unique Access, sometimes in the comments, they'll be like, oh, he was asking him a crazy question or whatever. And I'm like, no. The person I was interviewing brought it up. I right. didn't even ask him. I asked him a follow-up question. Right, right. But I didn't. And it's because, as with you, as with Nori, and as with myself, like we love the music and we love the culture and what it's about and why. That's why we're right. here in the first place. Yep. So now, uh, as you continue with, uh, explain to people what Crazy Hood is and all the different tentacles that you sure. have for those that don't know. So Crazy Hood was born uh, my senior year of high school, 1993, with a, a group of friends uh, that I still roll with today. And it was just a bunch of kids that were just passionate about hip hop. Mm -hmm. But really, we didn't know what we were going to do, you know, because we didn't have financing. We didn't really have any, any background. You know, we had some artists or some potential artists. I had friends that I had to convince, like, come on, you, you can rap. Like, let's, let's do this, you know? And one of them's here right now, Big Drain. And, and it was just like, we just wanted to do something and kind of like support and help develop the local scene. That was our goal originally. And it just started as doing parties. Then to me, DJing and doing mixtapes, which became a big thing for us. Uh, we had, I had a store called Crazy Goods with, with my partner, Eddie Giggs. Um, we've had a marketing company. We've worked, you know, all the labels, did all the right. street team stuff, uh, management. You know, we, we had a clothing line, on and on and on. And now we have the Crazy Hood Film Academy. We still have the CHP marketing and promotions. And I, I do consulting for, for companies. And, and, you know, we... we, we we do the, the podcasts, and I'm producing other podcasts as well. We got Fatherhoods, you know, and a bunch of other stuff. And crazyhood.com is just an online source where we just kind of funnel anything we're into or we want to support. We always put it there. Like, I look at crazyhood.com kind of like the evolution of my mixtapes. You know, my mixtapes, I put whatever I wanted to support and whatever I believed in, right. uh, whether it was a, a, just a relationship or just stuff that I just liked. And I do the same thing with crazyhood.com. Like, whatever, I, you know, I'm into, I want to support, or people I have relationships with, I try to support them through the site. So EFN also, it's uh, congratulations time. You guys recently signed what I believe is a remarkable and probably never been done before deal. That we know of. That we that know, we know yeah. of. You know, you got the title aspect, the mass appeal aspect, and the revolt aspect. Right. So break down what's going on with Drink Champs and how this came to be. Right, so we were able to do this... Uh, multi-platform deal because we have a deal with Tidal that's subscription based okay and they it's audio and video with them and they get an exclusive period with it and because they're subscription based it allowed us to that when we go public after their exclusivity period then we can sell ads on the audio podcast which is a deal with Mass Appeal okay Mass Appeal Endeavor <laughs> and then um, we already had Revolt as our linear TV partner so they're still in play, and they agreed to this partnership. You know, they had to agree because we were already partners with them as well. And so they, they handle the, the linear side and the YouTube releases on the Revolt YouTube page. And so you have a title, Mass Appeal Revolt, which in a sense we like to say it's Jay-Z, Nas, and Puffy. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's some heavy hitters right yeah, there. Yeah. And now, now that you have all these different ways to present the show, mm -hmm. how have you seen the way that people are looking at you differently? Well, it's kind of still fairly new. Okay. And so it seems like it hasn't really kicked in yet. Kicked in or gotten to the audience because the audience, they, they seem to get confused by the schedule changges and, mm. and seeing the different rollouts where there'd be a title and then, you know, you get, you get people like, man, I don't got a title, you know, like, and, you know, I thought it was on, on Revolt. So we're still trying to get the messaging out, you know. It, it, we were barely like maybe five episodes into the deal. Right. But definitely just the, the initial announcement 
the the feedback is just like yeah people have, it's never been seen before in terms of podcasting in terms of like the those three entities kind of being tied together and it's all right. with due to drink champs and yeah. congratulations thank you thank you man so yeah it's, it's pretty cool man we're we're really happy about it and and for the culture. <laughs> well, as Nori says, Queens runs the world, right? right. With Miami by his side. <laughs> <laughs> Including a little <laughs> shout out to Miami at the same time. <laughs> okay. So one of the things that, that I admire about what you do is that there's so many different things that you do and that you don't, it doesn't seem like you really put limits or worry about, is this going to be as big as this or right. whatever. So what gave you that mentality to where you were willing to explore different things? Uh, survival. Okay. If, if, you know, if, if I was going to make a living in this, I quickly learned that it wasn't going to be just one way. Right. You, know, you have to wear many hats and explore all different avenues. But I'm a, I'm a big like, believer in you should try to like, keep, like, you can go in any direction, but keep it relevant to what your like, original mission statement is or whatever you're really about. You know, like I've seen artists, for example, do one, start one, you know, they're like an underground lyricist, and then because some other style is popping, then they completely do that because they think that's going to work. That's not what I mean by, you know... <laughs> Adapting. <laughs> yeah. Like, I just feel like you should, you should be able to, to go in different directions, but kind of like, at the end of the day, if someone were to step back, they could see that it's all relevant to, to your original, you know, mission statement and what you're about and, and just everything. It just makes sense at the end of the day. Well, there it is, y'all, with DJ AFN. Thank you for coming through, Thank man. Thank you, brother. Appreciate it. With Soren Baker here on Unique Access. Make sure you guys look up support, as you already do, I'm sure, with Drink Champs. But D DJ EFN has so much else he's got going on. Check out crazyhood.com and support the man. He's making it happen. Appreciate Soren it. Baker, Appreciate Unique it. Access. Be sure to check out the history of gangster rap by Soren Baker. He's official. History of gangster rap features exclusive interviews with Ice T, Snoop Dogg, MC Ren, the DOC, and dozens of others. The history of gangster rap, a definitive look at how Los Angeles changed rap forever. In Los Angeles, the streets definitely set the tone of the hip hop music. I'm 19, I got a $50,000 car. My whole angle always was I'll be street, but I will always tell you the horrors that go along with this life. It would be penalties and casualties for just wearing the wrong color in somebody's neighborhood. And once gangster rap made it from the streets to the TV, the genre exploded. What's that five on your TV back Yo MTV it just catapulted us from being local heroes to national Gang bang rappers. The history of gangster rap discusses it all from 1980 up till today. It's always gonna be shit happening in the street. You know what I mean? So it's always gonna be something to talk about. The history of gangster rap in stores now.